Thank you, uh, Dr. Death. Um, <laughs> would you like a hug? I'm more than willing to help. Uh, we'll take questions on that at the end. Uh, next up is uh, Bill Thompson, as you know, a new media pioneer and journalist. And Bill is going to talk about Joe Clark's blog, uh, the impact of society, uh, society on the media connecting and collaborating. You might, or we just might answer Dr. Death. Um, everybody? Thank you. Excuse me, I have a Windows machines don't rubbish out in these days. that mediation takes 
place for wider society provides the enclosing framework for the mediation of technology, the architectures of use. Meaning, desire, and capability are observed, and we observe them within that framework. It is the discourse of technology. <coughs> Wittgenstein said, meaning of the word determines its use. Sorry, the use of the word determines its meaning. Even. This is his duck rabbit. It can be seen both ways, once you know what it is. He argues that language constructs reality because we can only think about those things that we can name. And so we end up playing language games, building realities that reflect our current understandings and our interests and our activities. But these don't actually need to be grounded in any fundamental truths about the world, even if the physical world does exist. And I'm willing to give you that just for the sake of argument today. Even if that world does exist and it constrains our psychological models, it does not determine them. So what we do may be deciding in a deterministic and determined universe. What we think about what we do is not decided. It remains if not completely free, but at least contingent. And so it is with technology. Social media, instant messaging, news, email, they're all like Wittgenstein's language games, where we make things mean what we want them to mean. Is friendship on Facebook the same as friendship from the real world? What about MySpace friendship? What about your cook friendship? How many wall posts does it take for you to feel close to someone? And what can it possibly mean to commit Facebook suicide? Would Sartre or can you acknowledge the existential dilemma over whether to stay on Facebook or not? I somehow think about it. As my friend Paula put it, it's been three weeks since my last confession. How often should we be out there on Twitter? I tweeted from down there as well, because I have to keep my Facebook friends happy and the people who follow me on Twitter. Does this make me sad or just connected? Does this make me boring or interesting to them? And what does it do to the quality of the relationships I'm building with those many people? We need to ask ourselves these questions. And we need to ask them in a context of designing and building new technologies and new services which we want large numbers of people to use, and which fundamentally we want to enhance the quality of their lives. We don't actually want the technologies to do them harm, at least I don't, I doubt any of you do. Now, that's tricky. What a particular technology may do is limited. It may be determined by physical limitations, it may be determined at quite a low level, like a microcode in a processor, it may be determined at quite a high level. The new version of iTunes, Music Store, of iTunes, does not work with open source uh, software. Sorry, let me get that right. The iTunes database cannot be written to or read by open source software anymore. Apple just changed the way it works. They've introduced a mm hash -hmm. into the database. As a result, if you've got an iPod, you can only get music with iTunes. You can't use it with Rhythmbox or any of the other 